So in this video I thought we'd look at building a bicone antenna or a biconical antenna as it's sometimes called as well and it's basically building on the last video I did where I showed you how to build a discone antenna. So here is the bicone antenna and we're going to use the same template as we used to build the discone antenna but this time we're just going to actually build the two cones. So these two cones are mounted horizontally to each other and what benefit that gives us is its radiation pattern it actually goes out in a donut shape in that fashion and the same on that side. So here is a rubber duck dipole antenna and with one of these the radiation pattern goes around in a donut shape and also you get some coming from the top as well but the radiation from the top isn't as powerful as it is on the sides. So in a bicone antenna like this one, what we're actually doing is making good use of the radiation pattern and that donut shape you get going around both sides. So an antenna like this would really benefit you if you're using a RC transmitter receiver and you come in towards the edge of your range and what you find you normally do when you've got a dipole antenna is you start pointing it and turning it to try and get that radiation pattern to actually transmit that little bit further but uh, with an antenna like this you're taking full advantage of the radiation pattern of the antenna so you probably would get a lot better range. So that really is one of the reasons for building this antenna is we're manipulating that radiation pattern to suit us rather than using one of these which I already know a disc cone antenna is more powerful than one of these and also the bicone antenna is but it's the unique radiation pattern that we're going to exploit with this antenna. So let's get onto the bench then and I'll show you how to make it. So most of the methods that we're going to use for this antenna are the same as uh, how I showed you how to make the uh, actual cone in the last video when we made this cone antenna but obviously this time we're going to make two cones instead of having a disc so again get yourself some tin from biscuit tin or sweet tin etc cut out the template I'm using the uh, right angled uh, template here to make the cone. I just find that one it uh, sits in the middle of uh, both the other angles and it gives you a best of both worlds so that's what we're going to use to build this antenna and uh, just carefully cut round the edge so you get it uh, nice and round as you possibly can. So again same method as I showed you in the last video, I'm just going to go down the edges and rough them up and prepare them to actually take some solder. And then flood tin just on the edges here and then uh, we'll bring them together to form the cone. So in the last video somebody asked uh, a question uh, about soldering irons and whether or not they could construct this antenna just using their normal standard non-variable soldering iron so here I've got an Antex 25 watt soldering iron and it seems to be doing the job rather well so I do find with this soldering iron I have to hold it against the tin for quite a bit longer just to transfer the heat once the heat starts transferring and it gets going it, uh, it does do the job so you don't need an expensive variable soldering iron to do one of these antennas and um, probably what will help you more when uh, soldering the actual cone together is not so much uh, the soldering iron like I've just shown you can do it quite easily with a 25 watt soldering iron but uh, it's keeping the actual edges as clean as possible just prior to actual tinning the edges up and uh, if you give it a clean and then form the actual cone itself and then give it another quick rub as well because this tin does tarnish really really quickly I mean that's the dirt that I've got off it while I've been um, forming the actual cone with my thumb so that's the important thing keep it really really clean just prior to actually tinning it and uh, you shouldn't have any problems at all so again just like in the last video once you've got it soldered up and remove the masking tape go back again with your rag or sponge and uh, just work again on that cone in it nice and round no creases in it whatsoever just so uh, it's uh, a nice job and a nice finish 
and then again flat piece of sandpaper or emery paper and circular movements working around not taking too much of that wavelength off just uh, enough so you blunt all this edge and smooth it off so uh, it looks a lot nicer and you're not going to cut yourself on it anymore so now we're going to actually concentrate on connecting up the coax to the two cones and uh, forming some kind of structure to hold it upright so what I've got here is a cheap pen and I'm going to use the plastic tube of this pen in order to create this part of the antenna now this antenna itself was an early one that I built and it does work, it works quite well but the SWR is um, a little bit too high, it's 1.8, 1.9 and the reason for that is this cross beam here that I've put in place keeps the cones at too much of a distance away from themselves if you remember in the last video when I said that uh, the little spacer here between the actual disc part and the cone here on this antenna wants to be five millimeters or less because the SWR increases the further away the disc is from the cone the same thing happens when you make a biconical antenna the two cones the further apart they are away from each other that increases the SWR so I've gone ahead and I've cut off a length of the pen outer case to 50 millimeters and I've drilled two holes close to the top in parallel so it's nice and straight and um, around five millimeter diameter holes and I've gone ahead and got a piece of LMR cable around 100 millimeters long and I've crimped a SMA connector onto the end of here so I can feed that up through the middle of this pen which is going to be my structure for the main antenna and when I've actually finished I'll put a little bit of epoxy in there just to glue it in place so it doesn't move around but uh, what I'm going to do now is cut back some of this uh, PVC outer casing here to expose the um, center element of the coax and the outer sheath and I'm going to tease them through the holes of the pen so I'm just using this outer sheath as a guide lining up with the coax to get roughly the right area where I want to uh, strip back this outer PVC sheath to so it seems to be if I strip it back about there that should be plenty so what I've done I've actually pulled out the weave of this uh, outer braiding it's a lot easier than cutting I've just used a multimeter probe to help me pull it apart and I actually don't want all this I probably want about half of it so what I'm going to do is take about half and twist it so we get a nice one piece of uh, this outer coax and I'm just going to cut the rest of this away and then expose the inner core of the coax so we can have a connection going out towards the side as well so I've cut the coax back and I've arranged the coax into this kind of arrangement and hopefully by the time I feed it through here that is what we're going to achieve inside there and we can add a little bit of hot glue at the end just to make sure that these have no chance of touching so I've straightened both the wires out now feed them up through this case and I've got a pair of tweezers to help me so just a little bit fiddly gently tease this one out a little bit first not all the way turn it around and tease that center conductor out and then give it a little push from the bottom so what I'm going to do now is put a little bit of epoxy glue onto the bottom here to hold it in place so it's nice and sturdy and I'm going to tin these wires up and I've pre-drilled some holes into the conicals and also pre-tinned right at the bottom down there and I'm going to feed on the wire 
and then I should be able to solder it down to the centre there. So then we've got the wire holding it in place and we can just strengthen that with a little bit of epoxy so it doesn't move anywhere. So I've got some masking tape holding this down so it's quite secure so I don't have to worry about that moving about. And just place the first conical into position where I want it. Try and bend that wire to the side there where we've already got quite a bit of solder on the seam. And then hopefully it'll sit there and I can get in with my soldering iron and my solder. And that's the first one soldered up and then like I've said once we've got them both in place we can add some epoxy just to strengthen them so they're not moving about. So of course the second one is uh, a little bit easier because I've now got this nice base to hold it down level and it should make it a bit easier soldering the second one in place. So I've got the sides glued on now and I've just put a little bit more epoxy down the centre there just to isolate them, just those two wires so there's no chance of them touching and what I've got here is a little screw cap that uh, you put your screw into your piece of wood and then you fold this cap back over and it covers it up so I'm going to cut away this bit here and then attach that to the top just to tidy it up and uh, finish it off just put a little bit of epoxy in here and then put that over the top and finish it off just nicely So at the moment we're looking at the test signal from my test router using my alpha card with the standard rubber duck antenna and it's coming back at around 58% which for the distance is reasonable. So what I'm going to do now I'm going to swap out this rubber duck antenna and connect the bicone antenna. So the signal will drop off slightly and there you can see a big big difference around 82 percent so well worth building so if you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it then please give it a big thumbs up and I'll catch you for the next one